Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just putting a quick intro to module number two. So this module deals with coordinate reference systems. So that's how do we take the big lumpy rock that is the Earth, big three-dimensional object, and display it on a 2D map. So uh, coordinate systems and map projections are probably the most complicated, boring, and important concept that you're going to encounter while studying GIS. So basically, they put the G in GIS, right? The geographic part deals with the world. So they're how we take our near infinitely complex 3D world and represent it in a simplified 2D model. So for lecture this week, um, you can find it under the content page. I got Monday and Wednesday split out. So again, Wednesday hasn't been filled out yet. This stuff will be available on Wednesday. Uh, but for today, uh, aside from this little quick intro video, um, we've just got two little videos for you to watch. Uh, but yeah, so what do and don't you need to know about map predictions? Well, um, you want to understand, generally speaking, which types of projections are better suited for certain circumstances. And I'll try to go over that um, in lecture and also get some exposure to that in lab. You want to know that the choice of projection can have really significant impact on your analysis and uh, have a significant impact on the way that your maps are perceived by map readers. And you also want to understand what map scale means and how it relates to the projection choice. Um, what you don't need to know about projections, uh, map projections are very complex mathematical transformations. So you really, you don't need to understand the intricacies of how they work. Uh, and you also don't need to know what specific projection is correct for every situation. Generally speaking, there's multiple projections that you could use uh, for any given situation. There's not usually one correct answer. And so when you're trying to determine what projection to use, you can ask someone or you can Google it. You don't need to memorize what projections right for what situation. Uh, but to get a broad overview, uh, just watch this box video. Uh, it's like six minutes long. I think it does a pretty good job of sort of highlighting why we need map projections uh, and then what are some of the flaws with certain projections that we use. Uh, and then uh, just watch this other video. So this is something that I recorded for a course uh, taught over the summer, uh, but it just gives a broad overview of the complexities of the earth uh, and its shape and really deviations from uh, an idealized sphere. So we'll go through uh, topographic differences, gravity induced differences, centrifugal force induced differences to talk about all the things that make the earth not really a round sphere, but more a lumpy ball of rock flying through space. So um, yeah, pretty short content wise for Monday, this was about 10 minutes long and this one's like five minutes long. Uh, and then on the application page, you'll find the lab assignment. So uh, the learning objectives for this lab assignment are basically to figure out how to work with coordinate reference systems in Arc Pro. So determine what CRS a given layer is in, learn about the map CRS and project on the fly and how that's different from the, the CRS of an individual layer. Uh, learn how to change projection, uh, investigate the impacts that coordinate system has on analysis, uh, learn how to set the scale of a map and display maps side by side. So we've got two parts to this uh, lab. The first part is a uh, map projection tutorial that was put together by one of my friends and coworkers at the library, uh, Maya Dario. So this tutorial has three exercises. You're gonna work through each of the exercises to get a quick overview of how to work with coordinate systems in ArcGIS Pro. So there's one, what coordinate system my data in, then a little bit on project on the fly, and then learn how to project your data. And then there's a couple questions pertaining to the tutorial. So if you follow the link, it will open up uh, this tutorial that Maya's put together. So you just need to download the data. And so this, Tutorial is written, uh, assuming that you're working with the data in the downloads folder. So you can just leave all the data for the tutorial in the downloads folder if you want, or you can put it in a different folder. Just know that 
substitute whatever folder you're working in with the downloads. Um, so it's pretty short. Uh, there's three exercises here. So we've got exercise one, what coordinate system is my data in? Just work through and figure out how to inspect the metadata, determine the coordinate system. Exercise two covers something known as project on the fly, which is uh, a function in ArcMap that will force layers to display in the same coordinate system, regardless of whether the actual base layers are in the same coordinate system. So we get a little bit on this. And then exercise number three is learning how to actually project your data. Uh, so you're gonna get a layer that's in one coordinate system and change it to another coordinate system. So these are pretty short, pretty quick, and easy to get through. Then uh, we're gonna do a little work separately uh, to look at the implications of coordinate reference system choice, specifically on population density. This is a pretty common calculation or metric that gets calculated a lot in GIS. So population density is simply the population divided by area. Uh, and so uh, if P is the population and A is the area, uh, the calculation, uh, like we can get the population from census data, but the area calculation we have to get from our actual map layer. And so that is going to be dependent on the map projection we choose. Um, and so if you work in the Mercator projection, uh, which we're gonna, I'm gonna have you calculate population density using the Mercator projection and an equal area projection and look at the differences that you get. Um, just to look at population density uh, to explain it a little more. Most densely populated countries are typically small city states like Monaco and Singapore. Uh, they have fairly large populations, but very small areas. Whereas somewhere like Mongolia is one of the least densely populated countries in the world. And that's because it has a small population, but a very large area. So this uh, part of the lab has two bits to it. First, you're going to set up a project. You're just gonna import the uh, Shape file that you work with in the tutorial that Maya created into a new project. And uh, basically you're gonna import that layer and then um, do a couple things, look at the metadata, learn how to add a field and uh, calculate that field. And then we'll work with some things called feature data sets, which you got, I think a brief introduction to in lab one, but you'll create a feature data set, which is basically a uh, collection of layers within a geodatabase where you can specify a specific coordinate system. So if you put a layer in a feature data set, it's automatically put into that coordinate system. It's a nice way to uh, manage and organize data. So uh, you will do that, create one in Albers equal area projection, one in the Mercator projection, and then you're going to calculate population density from that. Then uh, once you get the population density values and you enter, uh, those are gonna be some quiz questions. Next step is to just create a really simple map, uh, just doing a visual comparison side by side, showing uh, the uh, country of Canada displayed in the Mercator projection versus the Albers equal area projection. So uh, there's only one map submission um, this week. Uh, so, the module quiz is worth a bit more this week. There's a few more quiz questions and a handful fewer. This should actually say 60 points. I will update that. Uh, there's a handful fewer or more uh, quiz questions and fewer uh, assignment questions. And there's only one uh, map submission for this lab. So this lab should go pretty quickly. Uh, I tried to keep it short also to compensate for the fact that um, I know some folks, especially in the Monday lab, had a bit of a tough time getting things started up on uh, module one. 